Okay, in this video, I'm going to talk about arrays in C++. So some people call this the dumb array because it's not using an array from the STD library. Um, but we'll go ahead and get started. So we'll have an include IO stream as usual, and then int main, our main function, return 0. And inside, the way you would declare an array, so you could just think of an array as something that can hold um, different data types. So you could have, for instance, uh, int my int array here, and then that's the name of your array, and then the length. Here, in this case, I'll have a length 3. And then inside, you'll use your curly braces, 1, 2, 3. So those are the three elements inside my array. Okay. And you can also declare a float array. So you could say float my float array. And let's say it's also three. And then we'll just put some, some random numbers. OK, so those are my three floats. And then you could you could also have, um, so these, these two right here are arrays that has been initialized. You could also have arrays that hasn't been initialized. So I could say int my results may vary. And the reason why I say that is because sometimes, depending on which compiler you're using, uh, sometimes it'll default to certain values. But most of the time, it may just be like random memory, um, memory addresses. So if you debug this program, So we could look here. My results may vary. You could see that the elements 0, 1, 2 is some random value. Okay, So that's no good if that's not what you're looking for. So what you can do if you want to initialize it to 0, um, you can initialize it this way, or you can also put it inside a for loop. So you can say for int i equals 0, i is less than 3, i plus plus. And then you can say my results may vary, and then index i, and set that equal to 0. So if I run this now and start debugging, OK, you can see inside here, they're all now zeros. OK, so that's, that's the best way to make sure that you don't have garbage values. But if you want a simple way, um, another way you could do is you could say int. It's called the initializer method. So you could say initializer and then say the curly braces and just one single zero. Okay, so this will also give you all zeros inside. So if we debug, you can see um, the values in here. Um, the initializer array is also all zeros. Okay, so that's an alternative way you could uh, initialize your array. And then if you want to access a single element, you could say int first num. You could say my int array, for example, is 2. So that will be the last element. And if we run this, we will see the first num here is 3, which agrees with this here, 3. Okay. So that's how you access the different elements. And again, remember, this is going to be 0 indexed. So that is actually the third value. OK, and then with array sizes, some things you have to notice is that um, when you get size, there's a function called size of that gets the number of bytes um, inside an array. So that will be the total number of bytes. So I'm going to call this int total byte size. And if you call size of my int array, what this actually calculates is going to be uh, 4 times 3. There's three elements, and then each int is 4 bytes, so you actually get 12. So if I run this for total byte size, we're going to see it's 12. Okay. So that adds up with our math. And then we could get the size of an int by doing, I'm going to call this unit byte size and the size of. And we could just pass in one of the ints. So my int array, let's just take the first element. So to get the true length of the array, you could say int length equals total byte size divided by unit 
uh, byte size. And then that should give us length of three because it's going to be 12 divided by four. So if I start debug, you can see that length is three because 12 divided by four is three. Okay, so that matches our expectations. So the main thing here is to be careful of when you call size of, uh, make sure that whenever you call size of the array, that's not actually going to be the length. Okay, so not the length of array. So be careful about that. Okay, so that's how you work with array sizes. And then let's say you wanted to declare the array size with a variable. Uh, one thing you want to notice is, you know, if I say int my size equals five, you can't actually do int my array and then pass in my size like this. And you're going to get a compiler error. You can see it says something like, the value of variable my size cannot be used as a constant. So it actually expects your my size to be a const because for arrays, the size is, is set um, during build and you can't change the size. So you need to guarantee that it's going to be constant. So once you add in the constant, like we talked about in our last video, uh, we know that the variable can't be changed and then um, the array will be happy. Okay. So that's how you could declare your array size. Now we could also do things with like 2D arrays. So if you wanted to make a 2D array, I'm gonna say int my matrix, for example, and then let's, let's make a three by three. So you're gonna have two close braces. And then you're gonna put right here, the curly braces, and then my first one comma, and then four, five, six, and then seven, eight, nine. And sometimes for preference, I may like to line up the curly braces to visually see it a little bit better, but that's optional. So that's how you could declare your 2D matrix. And then again, if you want to access a certain element inside, I can say int middle my matrix. And then let's say I want to get the middle element, so I could just get one, one. Okay, so if I run this in debug, we should expect this to be a five. You see middle is five, okay? Because that's our middle element or the second row, second column. And let's say you wanted to iterate through this 2D array, what you can do is have two loops. So I'm going to say for int i equals 0, i is less than 3, i plus plus. And then for int j equals 0, j is less than 3, j plus plus. And then I'm going to say std c out my matrix. And then the two indices i and j. I'm just going to space some out with spaces. And then after each row, I'm going to print a new line. SCD double colon C out. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and clear this and then run my code. You can see it prints out my matrix. Okay. So that pretty much summarizes um, working with arrays in C++. So if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.